Here at the Odell household, we are in the home stretch of the school year. And even though my children's exams have been exchanged for projects, ugh, I can still tell that they have that same feeling that they've got miles to go before the journey of the school year has come to an end. I don't know about you, but I can remember that feeling at the end of the school year. You knew that summer was close at hand, but you also had that feeling of dread because of all the trials that stood between you and your freedom. And more than once in these past few days, we've had to encourage our children to say to them, hang in there. Summer is just around the corner. You can do it. Hang on. And in, in a much grander sense, that's what Paul is saying to us in the eighth chapter of his letter to the Romans, where he writes this, picking up at verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we await eagerly for the adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Romans chapter 8 is sometimes referred to as the high pinnacle of that letter because it's there in Romans 8 that we reach the joyful, uh, emotional high point of Paul's message to God's people. But Romans 8 is also a high peak in the sense that, that it can give us a perspective as well, not only the, the emotional high point, but a high point um, in the sense that Paul takes us there and he shows us how all of life, with all of its trials and difficulties, is to be set in the much larger context of the purposes and promises of God. Again, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. In the same way that we've had to encourage our children to hang in there through the trials of their final assignments here at the end of the year, reminding them that summer is just around the corner, so also we Christians, we need to be reminded time and time again throughout the journey of this life of the message of hope for, of what's to come that's given to us here in Romans chapter 8. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. You know, sometimes suffering comes in the form of disappointment. Uh, sometimes suffering can come in the form of a trial or a challenge that is more than we can handle, a task that is beyond us. And sometimes the sufferings of this present time can just come in the form of the tedious trials of everyday life. But regardless of the form, whenever they come, we Christians have the message of hope. We have been given the holy ability to set the trials of this life into the larger context of the promises and purposes of God. So that whatever trials we meet in this life, we know that they will not compare to the glory of the joy that we will experience in the eternal summertime of the presence of God, the joy that we will experience when Jesus comes again to remake heaven and earth. In verse 26, Paul goes on to remind us of something else that will help us through the challenges of this life. He writes, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what we to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. That is, not only do we have the, the hope of the future glory that is promised to us um, and the ability as Christians to place the trials of this life in, into the context of that larger hope, but we also have the presence and power of the Holy Spirit of God, who is there to strengthen and provide for us in those moments when we feel like we can't even take another step forward. And this is particularly important when the trials of this life can begin to get us down. I know that some of you, some of you have shared with me that you suffer from what the Irish uh, call a touch of the melancholy. 
And that can certainly happen in this life, and yes, it can happen for the people of God. And if that's where you are right now, then I want to encourage you to call upon the Holy Spirit of God in the name of Jesus and to ask him to bring you to that mountaintop perspective of Romans 8.18 and to lift the gaze of your heart upward and to set your sight on the promises of God. My friends, may God strengthen you with the hope of the things that are not seen but that are promised by none other than God himself. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. May the light of that glory shine on you, both this day and always. My friends, have a great weekend, and we will see you on Sunday.